Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another edition of Soccer As We Like It, the Man United direction. As you know, there is no football again this weekend for Man United. It's international break. There was no football last week. While you're watching our video, don't forget to smash a like, subscribe, and don't forget to share and follow us on all the social media platforms. Thank you so much for your support and thank you for getting us to where we are today. Without your help, we won't be where we are today, but thank you so much. But continue to subscribe if you are new and watching us for the very first time. Thank you so much. Right, let's get right into it. Breaking news, breaking news. Ronaldo has been charged. Charged by the FA for in mis uh, what do they call it misconduct. This was an incident that happened in May at Goodison Park when he smashed the phone out of a, a player's a, a, a fan's hand. That was back in May. We are now in September, May, June, July, August, September. Five months. First of all, it's Ronaldo and it's Manchester United, so it will bring big news and it will cause a lot of friction. Ronaldo's trying to get, as you know, he missed preseason. He's trying to get into the team. Now this, without what is going to happen, I can see the FA giving him a two-match ban or one-match ban. Regardless, they're going to ban him. This is the last thing United need and this is the last thing Ronaldo needs. But this is where the football is. You've had a bad game and a, a, a fan putting a phone right in your face. And you, you, you see what I mean? It, he's a normal, he's a human being. He apologised. He he said, you know, uh, I'll sign. And, you know, but the mum said, you know, we don't care what you want to give. It is what it is. But, I mean, tell us what you think about it. Do, do, do you think it's an overreaction that, that he got a warning from the police at the time? Now is the, the FN now charging him? So they're going to find him and they're going to, ban him. It, it, it's just stupid. It, it's a waste of time and it's just stupid. I'm not condoning but he's already got a police. He got a warning from the police. He went to the police station now. He, they wanted to come and, and appear before an FA tribunal. Really? Really? Is is this where we are, mate? Is this where we are? But this is... I, I just... Tell me what you guys think. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. But on another level, on something else I want to talk about, this is, uh, what can I say? John, um, we heard what Harry said. We heard what Brandon Williams said. Brandon Williams supporting Harry, that Harry's a great guy. He trains hard. He's a true professional. That the people should lean off from him and give him a break in some space. Brandon, what do you know? You don't know anything. Just shut up. Just shut up. As for Harry, the leaks about him blaming the gayer and other men out there defenders and the club for not helping him last in that he contributes part of his poor performance to the Gaia's lack of performing the Gaia mate and Ronaldo together got this club to sixth position and that is take and that is and and that my my, my people is that was as bad as it was they were our two best players last season the rest I, I I can't I can't even say anything about those the rest of the players last season but for him to stay there and blame the gayer and the club did not help him that's why his his form was so bad last season his form is still bad this season that might be someone in his family trying to um you know help his uh, help his, help, his, help his profile but we don't know he hasn't come out to say anything it's been 24 it's been 48 hours now and he's not come out to say anything you know, so that is Ari. Now, John Murtoff and um, this just gets worse. John Murtoff and um, what's his name? Um, Richard Arnold had an interview. I mean, they had a meeting, more like not an interview, a meeting. And I want to give you some insights on what they said. This is what John Murtoff read. This is what John Murtoff. You know, he, they're already complaining. They're already complaining about the money they spent this summer. They're already complaining about that. They're already complaining about, you know, Dan Hag wants to rebuild. He wants, he's already giving them a list for January. He's giving them a list for next summer. They, he gave them a list in March, in April. They, they, didn't meet them, they, they didn't meet that, as you can see. If this incompetent board of bunch of clowns and buffoons had followed instructions to the letter and got what was asked of them at the time, this was the same guy who invited them to the pub that the money is available. Really? 
You really just think people are stupid, innit? We ain't stupid. Football fans are most intelligent people of today, mate. When he sat there in the pub and told United players, United fans, that we have money, the manager will have money. Then why? Ask me this. Martinez, I mean, what's his name? Anthony was valued at 40 million in May. Right? In May. It took these guys May, June, July, August to get this guy when the price had literally gone up, when the season had really started for 100 million. And yet you complain. So, what I told you, I knew something was not right. The fact that they have spent money, they said, January money, we won't be spending like that again. So, let me read this statement that he made. This is from John Murtoff. Hold on, let me find it. He said, during the summer, we made significant investments in the first team squad with permanent, with permanent addition of five regular starters, including um, a balance of experienced international players and younger m m emerging talent. We also saw a high, higher than usual number of departures because this club doesn't sell. So those people who left on free, it was like, whoa. Matic, Pogba, Mata, uh, Henderson, who has left? Uh, Cavani. It was like, uh, you know what I mean? So we also saw a higher than usual number of departures. And this was an equally an important part of refreshing the squad. Really, mate. After this, the disappointing 21-22 season. It wasn't a disappointing season. It was a shambolic season. Get it right. We will continue to support Eric in ensuring ensuring that the players with the, the right quality and characters to achieve success while ensuring that investment remains consistent with our commitment to financial accountability. This is the director of football talking nonsense. Overall, we are ahead of schedule in our recruitment plans as emerged at the start of the summer. And we do not anticipate the same level of activity in future windows. As always, our planning focuses on summer window. So what he's trying to say, this summer window was an, a one of extraordinary summer. Do not expect that. So let me say, 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 say. he said, overall, we, had, we are ahead of schedule of our recruitment plans as, um, as, as envisaged at the start of the summer. Mate, you you went to Turin and fucked up that day. I mean, he wasn't going to come in with uh, Rabio. Then you went to Spain and dilly dallied with um, um, uh, De Jong for four, five, six months and got nothing. The guy already told you he wasn't coming and you were te torturing and teasing and dragging out the, the, the club and the fans through the mud. Bunch of idiots. <sighs> and we do not anticipate the same level of activity in future windows. Hmm. We do not. So he's literally told you, don't expect this kind of summer sales next summer. You don't expect this. Is, this was a one-off. So enjoy it while has. Starting with the men's first team, the most important development during the 2021 was the, the appointment of Eric Ten Hag as manager. And through search and diligence process, it was clear to us that Eric was the strongest candidate based on his outstanding coaching record, his commitment to the proactive attacking football we want to play, and the vision and ambition he showed for the role. Man, please, just talking nonsense. Now, this is Arnold's first comments. In summary, everyone at the club is aligned in a clear strategy to deliver sustained success on the pitch and a suitable economic model of it to the mutual benefit of fans, shareholders and other stakeholders. We believe the building blocks for the future success are being put in place. The stadium needs repair. It's been di dilapidated for the last 16 years and you're not talking about updating the facilities? Oh dear. So how are you building blocks? We believe in building blocks for future success as being part, being put in place. But uh, but we acknowledge that there is still much more for us to do this season. Of course. 
Of course, mate. Improve the facilities would be a great start. But these owners are taking out so much money that did you guys realize the debt we owed is now more than before? Which means they keep borrowing. So where do you think that 150 million came from? Not from the dividends they take out. It's they borrow, it's like saying, you know what? Hey, give me 200 million. I'll give 400 in the next two years because oh, this thing we're going to make this thing big. That's what they're doing. They're just borrowing against borrowing against borrowing. There is still much more for us to do this season and beyond, and the success will not happen overnight. Mm -hmm. As a club, we are moving forward, united and committed to achieving our goals. Please get just shut up. These guys actually think we're just stupid. We, while remaining committed to a long-term investment in the stadium, we will be disciplined in our capital plans, which must be sustainable and mindful of the macroeconomic pressures and inflationary environment currently impacting UK and the wider global economics. What he's trying to say is we will try to do the best we can with what we have with the resources and resources not affecting our capital plans and our macroeconomic pressures and infl in, in, in inflationary environment. Yes, we have an infl there's inflation in the world today. We get that inflationary commitments in the world. We get that. And the global pandemic, we understand that. But the stadium has been like that before the pandemic even started, mate. So all this talk is absolutely just nonsense. It's just like talking crap. Anyway, like I was saying, um, <laughs> this club would never cease to amaze me. Honestly, you had you heard from Ari and his crew talking utter bollocks. You have FA after four months now charging Ronaldo for knocking the phone off a, a fan's hand when the guy's trying to put phone in face. The guys had a. They have this club saying this summer window was a one off. Kind of enjoy it while it lasts. We're not going to have a lot of windows like this in the next coming sun, summers. So, what they're trying to say is the money we spent on Anthony. We're not going to get that kind of money. That's probably like eating into next two windows. That they focus on summers, not January windows. Isn't that isn't that funny? Ain't that ridiculous? But this is where we are. So we have, like I said, I don't see league titles or Champions League anytime soon because of the way this structure is. We need, now there's another consortium that was looking to come to United, who want 26% of the club. We don't want those, because we have too many people buying into, too many cooks for the broth. You have too many cooks in the kitchen. You can't get anything done. You need one owner, own it, manage it, run it, bring it to the best, invest in it, and bring it to the best of its ability. You bring, uh, um, owner who wants them to be the best of the best. Abram, as much as people say Abramovich was a, a, a shrewd man, he sat managers, but he invested in the club and he got them to win trophies. And let's call it as it is. Let's call it as it is. In the last 10 years, do you know Chelsea won more trophies than Manchester United? That's a true fact, mate. That is a true fact. They always find a trophy. We haven't won in six. We haven't won a trophy in six years. <laughs> These owners have to go. We, under this ownership, we cannot achieve much. Honestly, you know when you're, well, you know when, you know when you have a, a hamster in the wheel, just going around in a circle. That's what we do. That's what we're doing. So Jim Radcliffe would be great for this club. First of all, he's a football fan. First of all, he's a United fan. He wants to build the club, rebuild the club, and bring the club back to where it should be. But the Glazers, that is it's just another business adventure for them. See what I mean? So we need to get them out. Because under this ownership, we are not going to win no trophies. Don't 
get your hopes up too high. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. We'll have another great show tomorrow called Who is the King of the Flops? Which means we are going to do a show based on who have been the worst players United have ever had over the last 20 years, mate. So join us and watch us and watch the video and look out for the video and you will see who is going to be crowned the king of the flops. I'll see you on the next one. I'm Tim Ross, your host. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Thank you very much. Please subscribe and support the channel. Thank you so much. I want Spotify. So when you're driving to work, working at gym, just go on Spotify and listen to our, our show. All right? I'll see you soon.